I'm obsessed with winning because unless we win, the Tories can bring back grammar schools. Unless we win, we do, wouldn't have been able to have things like the minimum wage and Sure Start and devolution to Scotland and peace in Northern Ireland and all the other things that we did. You have to win power in this country. And John talks about building a social movement. Social movements don't deliver the things that a Labour government did and that a Labour government in the future right. can. So I, I do want the Labour Party to unite, but it has to unite around something, a policy agenda and politics, that we can actually go to places like this. I can remember we went to Dorset South in 1997, not far from here. And I remember the media saying to us, this is just a stunt. You come into Dorset South, you're never going to win this. We won it and we held it. John McDonnell, we have to win. No one is arguing that we don't have to win. We have to win elections and we have to ensure that we have the broadest appeal. And we have to recognise the political times in which we're in. The reason that Jeremy Corbyn got elected leader is because <coughs> excuse me, he reflects... He reflects a movement <coughs> excuse me, right there across Europe and America as well. People have been through the crash of 2008. People have experienced the austerity over the, over the years and wanted something different. People who wanted a straightforward politics as well, without spin and triangulation. John, we so, did straightforward politics. Let me... Let me, let me it was straightforward. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. I think that's what people voted for when they elected Jeremy to be leader of the party. And... At that point in time, we'd lost a general election. We were between seven and ten points behind in the polls. What then happened is that we won every parliamentary by-election and increased our majorities. We won every mayoral election. We matched Ed Miliband in the local council elections at his highest. Mm. And actually, we were over... So you're on course to victory. Well, let me just... Well, no, hang on a second. Let's just get let to the point. Let me just finish and this point. These, these long lists let, of, of let what you've done. Let me just finish this point. Right, We'd then, overtaken the Conservatives yeah, you, in the polls. So we were laying right. the foundations... We were laying the foundations, I believe, for electoral victory in due course. Well, and we it, were bringing yeah, together yeah. the party, left, right and centre. The shadow cabinet that Jeremy appointed was from left, right and, and so centre. so what went wrong? Because, I mean, now you're clearly not in the lead in the polls. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, but the, uh, the, the, lesson that, the lesson that we've got to learn very, very clearly is that people will not vote for a divided party. Oh, no, and they're... what happened is, is that a group of, unfortunately, people within the party weren't willing to accept Jeremy's mandate. We, mm. They launched what is effectively a coup, and we've gone through a couple of months of, I think, absolute distraction. But I'm interested in one thing. Do you think that the country as a whole has moved to the left? I mean, you make no, you make no bones about saying you're a Marxist. Your reaction to the cap capitalist crisis. I'm a Marxist. I'm honest with people. Is that what the country as a whole wants? Well, a Marxist? I've said time, as I've Chancellor said, I'm, a, I'm a socialist. I'm a, a Marxist socialist. are the words no, you use. I'm a socialist. Are you a Marxist? No, I'm a socialist. Well, why did you say I'm a Marxist? Marxist? Because actually, I was trying to. I was demonstrating a prediction of the capitalist crisis at the time. Would, anyway, said, I'm look, honest with people. You said I'm a Marxist. That's right. I, didn't I, want to... I was. <laughs> I was saying, I was predicting what Marx would say in terms of the economic no, crisis that was coming. Mm. You Let said, I'm a Marxist. I was you predicting. You can go on YouTube. I you was predicting. I was predicting what was coming. You're a very nasty piece of work. Okay. And okay. I shall tell you this as well. Okay. I'll tell if you can, this. Let me tell you what's happening. I can finish a sentence. Can I tell you what's happening in Parliament? I, obviously, I don't agree with Labour MPs, but there are a number of Labour MPs who are good and honourable, decent people who believe in things that I don't agree with, but they add value and they are elected. They haven't formed a government, but they're there to do a job. And the job they're there to do is to hold my government to account and to represent those of you who are not Conservatives and make sure that your voice is heard and democracy prevails. And many of these people are frightened, so frightened, humiliated, almost terrorised by Mr this MacDonald and his gang. They will leave politics, and that's is bad for politics. Rubbish. And there is a fine is example it? of it, ladies and gentlemen. You are being let down. As a democracy, we need good, strong oppositions who are credible, who test government, this hold them to right. account. <laughs> But so, what is your just no, uh, we've all, We're in the position of relying John, on the SNP to do the job of John, the John opposition. McDonald, John McDonald, it's you, shameful. You, all right.
You, you, it would be. It you, really, you said he was a very nasty piece of I work. I think he is. Uh, you may think that. You need to justify it if you say because that. Because I have, I have. There are colleagues of mine in the House of Commons, Labour MPs, who are at the point of being terrorised by, by McDonnell and his cronies, oh, is... and they don't stand up to them. There are women MPs who suffer day in and day out from misogynist, unpleasant, sexist abuse on Twitter, on Facebook, from people who apparently are within their own party. There is a Jewish Labour MP, a woman who is living in a safe house because of the levels of anti-Semitism right. she has to bear. It's a disgrace mm. and this it must stop and you, sir, can stop it. This is uh, Alistair Campbell. This is out. Do, do, Alistair, I will talk now. Look, me, I just no, want to no, know, do you, sorry, Alistair Campbell, do you recognise that picture just let before I come respond. to John? I will, you've, I will let you. You've not allowed me to speak I have. while this abuse has been All right, on me. Let me make this absolutely clear, and we've made it clear time and time again. We will not tolerate abuse within the Labour Party. We've condemned it time and time again. Every time there's been a level of abuse that's been waged, and Jeremy Corbyn has made it absolutely clear, if we've identified the individual, they will be out of this party and suspended. Simple as that. <coughs> We're not accepting this smear campaign that's going on from the Tories and others as well. We've been working over the last year to unite the party, and we were winning electorally and in the polls. Yes, a coup was launched by a small minority who could not accept Jeremy's mandate. What we, we are a small minority who could not accept the mandate. Jeremy was elected on the basis. Jeremy was elected. Jeremy was elected on the basis of 59.5% of our members. We are now going through a democratic election. Once that election is over, whoever is the leader, whoever is the leader, we will unite behind. And we have been an effective opposition in terms of defeating the Tories on tax credits, on PIP, the cuts for All disabled right. people, John, and a range of others.